this week on Supercars Talk, Fabian Coulthard fires shots at DJR, we nearly see a classic Jamie Winkup weekend, and there's random mask wearing. The big news this week was some great paint jobs uh, for Will Brown and Andre Heimgartner. Uh, Will Brown's uh, Pedder's car, two thumbs up, that looked brilliant. Uh, I think that even looked better than the WD-40 uh, livery he had at Bathurst. Uh, the Ausland one, not bad, uh, but it does, it gets a little bit lost in translation. I, I think... The Pedder's car, that, that looked really good. Um, it was on an E-Series livery that I think someone else ran, uh, possibly even Scott Pedder in a guest appearance uh, last year. Um, I try not to remember those times too much. Uh, but yeah, that looks great. Um, and Jaime, uh, the Black Ned Whiskey, uh, I think it was a premix can that they were i could actually do with one of those right now to be honest um yeah uh it, great looking car it just yeah those colors looked really good together looked good on track too bad the results uh weren't there for Jaime over the weekend uh he took the um the kelly mantle of uh going disappearing for the weekend uh while dave reynolds actually had a reasonable weekend um yeah, obviously they're doing some work on those cars and uh, mixed results uh, over the weekends for those guys. Fabian Coulthard this week came out and uh, took shots at uh, his old team, DJR, and uh, said that he is happy that the team is finally listening to him. And with that, they locked out the back row of the grid. Um, yeah, it does... Wouldn't be bragging too much about the team listening to me and uh, then having those results. Um, and to uh, yeah, add salt to the wounds there, um, he got to start from the pit lane on Saturday because the car had no electricity and uh, couldn't start. Uh, I think they had to chuck a new battery on it and on his way, um, yeah, the, I think he finished last um, and Sunday wasn't much better. So, um, yeah... Two thumbs up there. Uh, I found it strange as well that Scott McLaughlin actually came back on social media and, you know, explained the whole situation that they were given the same chances and rah, rah. Like, yeah. I, Scott, you were the favourite child. You were given the favourite engineer and things like that. But, I mean, Fabian was ingrained in the team. He did actually win before you did at the team kind of thing. Like, he... For all intents and purposes, he had the same opportunities. Um, and when someone comes in and dominates like that, of course the team is going to gravitate towards the better driver. All makes sense to me. For the used car fans out there, it's been announced that Super 2 will be using the ZB Commodore and the Mustang uh, in season 2023. No real surprises. Uh... I would have maybe liked to have seen, you know, maybe instead of them using Gen 2 cars in Super 2, just going straight to the Gen 3 car as their main car for maybe 2023 or maybe delaying it an extra year rather than all the teams having to go out because then it, it, it's essentially going to, I think, force Super 2 to have at least that Gen 2 platform for two more years um which is going to be a much more expensive platform unless i don't think it's going to be possible but unless you can somehow shoehorn the new engines into the gen 2 somehow uh as i said though i don't i think there's some sizing issues with it i, I could be totally wrong about that but yeah i don't think you can just mix and match them like that so it just means that this, it makes sub 2 more expensive again Granted, those cars will probably be cheaper to purchase because there's going to be a flood of them on the market uh, towards the end of next year, but still you've got to keep running them, whereas the Gen 3 might be a bit more expensive to start off with at that point, but it should be cheaper to run, plus you, you're going to be running it for a longer period of time. And for the racing over the weekend, uh, Triple Eight just uh, 
won two, both races, domination. Um, to top it off, they even won both Super 2 races with Brock Feeney. At least uh, Andrew Mazuris didn't finish second in both races from, you know, just clean, clean sweep the whole lot. Uh, Anton Di Pasquale finished uh, third in both races. Maybe someone's been listening to me. Uh, <laughs> he, he was quite impressive over the weekend. Not so impressive, though. Uh, 30 seconds behind the leader on Saturday and 20 seconds behind the leader on Sunday. Um, what made matters worse as well, uh, no entertainment cars came out. Um, we really need some of those, you know, tail end Charlies to get out there and crash into the wall and things like that to create, uh, you know... Bring the pack back together a bit, because uh, they're just getting too spread out. Uh, yeah, it's just not fair. Um, it looked like Jamie was going to do one of those just, you know, sail off into the distance kind of races that uh, we all enjoyed so much between about uh, 2008 and um, whenever McLaughlin joined DJR, kind of that put a bit of a stop to that just, uh, you know, sailing off into the distance. Um, yeah, and... Um, Chain come from kind of seemingly nowhere a bit um, in the third stint um, and just kind of, you know, reeled him in and uh, passed. Uh, and uh, they kind of went hard at each other, but I'm sure if it was, you know, a Tickford or a Walkinshaw car or something like that, yeah, it might not have been quite such a friendly pass. Um, there's not too much to cover, really, because... Yeah, it was all pretty straightforward from that end. Um, Will Davison didn't uh, get... An, he was a millimetre of fuel on the gauge, so, you know, kind of probably a litre of fuel too short on the Saturday. Uh, so that dropped him from 5th to ninth. Um, there was lots of passing going on because the tyre deck... Eh, it was good because there was, you know, four essentially what was a bit of a boring race um it's hard to call it boring because there was lots of passing in that but in the the result was kind of uh set in stone after the first corner i suppose in both races that and yeah okay shane came from behind and passed and whatever but it was just a triple eight kind of cakewalk it wasn't you know wasn't a big battle for the win. Uh, so, but there, at least there was a lot going on as people stopped early and moved forward and all of that kind of jazz. Uh, so at least that made it a little bit interesting. Um, with it being a sprint format next weekend, will it be quite so interesting, the races, or will they... Um, the, as far as I know, the distances haven't been set yet. I'm expecting it to be pretty like what it's been which i think has been around kind of 120 ish k's each race so probably around that kind of 44 lap ish so 22 laps on the tires if they're using the same tires uh, could have been interesting maybe if we could get those super softs that were supposed to be at winton um, maybe if we get them in for the weekend uh yeah that would be interesting having to do uh, it'd be hard because you've got, you know, six sets over three races with potential two stoppers in the races. Hey, that could be interesting if someone decided to throw three sets at one race and just go all out blazing and then just, you know, take the pain in one of the other races. Uh, yeah, that, that would, could be a bit of fun. Um... In the Sunday race, uh, Perkat and Hazelwood, they started on the second row. Uh, Nick Perkat basically said that uh, after watching what Courtney did on Saturday, which was uh, tried to keep up with the Triple Eight guys, he burned up his tyres and, uh, yeah, kind of ended up nowhere. He said, yeah, basically, I'm not as fast as them, I'm going to let them go. Um, which we saw on the first lap where he found himself in second place. Um I would have liked to have seen him fight a bit, which in the end he probably could have because um, his power steering decided to uh, jettison itself out of the car. Um, yeah, that, that you know would have at least put a bit of spice in there if he put a bit of a fight up, which might have made the end of the race a bit more closer when, you know, if Shane had less laps to catch Jamie and might have been a bit more desperate at the end. Yeah, um... That's about it to cover. Uh, yeah, could have been a bit more interesting. Um, 
One thing we do need to cover off, though, which, once again, um, penalties being handled out. Um, Jay Kostecki got disqualified for being under the minimum tyre pressure on the Sunday. How is this different to Nick Perkett last round, you say? Um, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. So, with as far as I understand, Nick Perkett's one, they were sat on the grid and they went, oh, crap, we, you know, we're under the minimum tyre pressure. He supercars, can we, you know, change out the tyres? And um, they disadvantaged themselves because they didn't bleed the tyres down to the minimum pressure and blah, blah, blah. So, Percat, they put the hand up and said, hey, something's wrong. Uh, with the Kostecki one, as I understand it, they had one tyre that was underneath as the cars took off for the formation lap. As... I think um, Matt Stone said by the third turn, the tyre was up to pressure. Uh, so there was no advantage from it, um, but he did take off on the formation lap. Technically not a racing lap, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know where the rules are, where you have to have, uh, as far as I believe, at no time are you allowed to have the tyres under that pressure, uh, which... Obviously, they did. Uh, it was only one tyre. There's no... He didn't run with it. Um, he didn't race with it under the pressure. But the problem with this is it becomes a slippery slope because what happens at the next round when Jamie Winkup's cruising around on the formation lap and it's only on the last turn that he gets his up to say, well, we never raced with them at that pressure. And the, it really becomes so... I suppose you've got to kind of... What I would prefer to see, though, is we just go, no minimum tyre pressure. We don't, they, the cars, it's a good idea having the sensors on the cars as a safety feature because you can see on the data then if a tyre is going down um, and it could avoid a big accident. We have seen some big accidents. The one that springs to mind uh, in my memory is Greg Murphy in 97 at Phillip Island. That was one hell of a shunt, um, which maybe if he knew that tyre was going down, you know, maybe they could have avoided that. Uh, I'm sure there was one more recently when we did bring in the tyre pressure monitoring stuff. Um, but I can see from a safety thing, I think it's just, you know, one of these things that maybe it's getting a bit ridiculous on um, policing it. So maybe we just let them go. Um, but it's because Dunlop doesn't want to see their tyres exploding and look bad in the press because everyone turns around and goes, oh, stupid Dunlop tyres, they exploded. Um, because we were running them on, you know, like 50 degree camber or whatever and at, you know, 3 PSI. Um, even though Dunlop told us to run them at, you know. Um, yeah. I'd like it to be a bit more open slather and, you know, let's see a tyre explode because someone pushes it to the limits. Uh, but apparently we can't have that anymore. So um, Jake Kostecki gets disqualified and it's all okay because Supercars hates Matt Stone racing at the moment. For st I, I don't know what Matt Stone did to him, but obviously you're not allowed to buy a racing entitlements contract. You've got your two, that's it. Um, which I am hearing rumours that um, we might get into that next maybe the week after next week because there'll be a race review next week uh, but might get into a bit of the silly season stuff because I am hearing some murmurings about things um, obviously overseas people taking Jamie Winkup's seat apparently <coughs> bullshit um, yeah so that is yeah in a roundabout way that kind of covers off the racing for the weekend um, the points nobody cares because uh, you know Shaman Gisberg is miles away and it's his teammate in second um, if you really care the kind of third positions heating up a bit Davison Mostert Waters are pretty close um, yeah who cares there's some points you know People are winning them, and uh, yeah, Van Gisbergen essentially is wrapping up the title now. The last couple of things I want to cover off, of course, we got the Super Sprint next weekend. Um, expect more of the same, really. I, the Triple Eight was so far ahead, I can't see people just turning that around in a week. And as far as I know, we're running the same tyres and that, so... Um, the only difference will be it will be three shorter races for them to win instead of two longer races. So, um, yeah, 
The big thing I wanted to cover, um, random mask wearing, it seemed, over the weekend. So I did actually, I posted some stuff on Instagram. Um, aren't we all proud of me? Uh, <laughs> I've just got to keep it up now. That's what she said. Um, anyway, so the interviewers weren't wearing masks, but all the drivers and it seemed the team personnel had to wear masks. Um, and this was probably the, the biggest highlight of this over the weekend I saw was when Charlie was interviewing uh, Frosty and she had a crack about Frosty wearing his mask properly. And I thought, you hypocrite, um, you haven't even got a mask on. Now, Apparently, this has something to do with them being media um, and the media not having to wear masks because, you know, um, it looks silly on camera, but then the drivers have to wear them, which looks silly on camera. So I don't quite get the distinction, um, but there were also plenty of times where they went and interviewed drivers like in when they're in their ice bath and things like that didn't have any masks on or uh, I'm sure I saw James Courtney and his new squeeze uh, sat there at the end of the race and they came over and Courtney quickly chucked on a mask and no one else that was there was wearing a mask and they quickly scampered off so they didn't get seen on camp but it was all too late they were already seen um, and the I think it was Charlie again walking up with the microphone putting it you know into their face um, with no mask on so that was yeah, I did. why is it, you know, one rule for one and one rule for another? I, maybe I can understand when you've got, you know, uh, Scaife and Jess in the studio that, you know, they have them socially distanced in the studio, maybe then. But when you walk around pit lane, you know, why, why do you not have to wear a mask but the drivers do? Um, just a, yeah, one of those stupid... Um, yeah, things that, you know, it just highlights, uh, you know, that those kind of people who are on the odd side of things out there that are saying that, you know, COVID's all made up and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, apparently uh, I get too political on this sometimes. So um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure, but I did get a message last week saying that, you know, I'd unsubscribed because you're getting too political and I don't like your political views coming into this and I, yeah, I thought eh, what political views have I really uh, you know m maybe because I bagged out his favorite team or so anyway that's it for this week uh more racing next weekend that's exciting so uh, <laughs> back to backs are great um although I think we already know who's going to win so anyway um we can live and hope that you know Anton continues his ascension of getting closer and maybe over the three races he's only 10 seconds behind and then he's equal with them and then maybe he's 10 seconds in front by the final one uh anyway that's uh you know i'm, I'm gonna try and uh pray to the racing gods each night that that happens um let me know what you think down in the comments i'm still dave and i'll catch you later <laughs>